the shit. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophia and if you are new here, this is my channel, Sophia Sees Beauty, where I review all things beauty and makeup. Today I'm super excited. I have the new Danessa Myricks Dewy Lip and Cheek Palettes for you all. I'm going to be doing a full review of these. We're going to swatch both of the palettes, all of the colors. We're going to do a demo, give you guys application tips, let you know how these feel and wear on the cheeks. I also am going to be comparing these to other cream products from Danessa Myricks, such as the Balm Contour, her other cream palettes, and the Duet Balm. So if this is helpful for you guys and that is interesting to you, keep watching. Before we get started, please consider subscribing to my channel. I am a new YouTuber and luxury beauty Instagrammer. I put out two to five videos per week and I try and cover all of the new luxury releases as well as other fun videos like monthly favorites. So if that is of interest to you, please, please, please click the subscribe button. I would love to have you as a part of my community. Also, don't forget to give me a thumbs up if this is a particular type of video that you guys like watching. Not only does it help my channel, but it also lets me know this is the kind of content that you guys enjoy. I would very much appreciate your thumbs up. Alrighty, let's get into the product details here. So if you guys are not familiar with Danessa Myrick, she is a fabulous makeup artist and you definitely need to be following her on Instagram because she really produces some of the most amazing looks, but she also has her own makeup line. So she has a whole line of different types of products and a lot of these are very much geared towards makeup artists because she is a makeup artist herself. So it is a makeup artist brand, but I would say, especially in the past year or two, she's gained a lot of popularity with the mainstream consumer market. So I would say that her brand is kind of a good, a good cross between things that are great for makeup artists, but also really cool products that work well for the regular makeup lover like myself. And so what she has launched here are these basically cream cheek and eye and lip palettes. These are very multi-purpose. Danessa really, really likes cream products. I would say she's almost like the queen of glowing skin she just creates the most magnificent skin seriously follow her on instagram she also does a lot of really great tutorials showing how to use her products so she did a teach me tuesday this week that i watched where she showed how to use these particular products so just want to mention that i'm going to be going over a lot of what she said in the application demo but just a little bit of background about the brand in addition to background about these specific cheek palettes. Now these retail for $32. I purchased these off of Sephora, but you can also purchase them off of the Danessa Myricks website. Usually Danessa Myricks is also sold at Beautylish. I don't know if these are live there yet, but I will link it down below so you can find all the places that you can shop these palettes. And I'm gonna read a little bit about these products from the Sephora website. It says, this is a skin loving ultra luxe cheek and lip cream palette filled with four multi-use shades ideal for all skin tones and some of the highlighted ingredients are jojoba oil shea butter and vitamin e so these are going to be very moisturizing they're supposed to be very smooth and blendable and yeah they are basically cream products it also says the lightweight balm like texture blends seamlessly to create a healthy flush of color for the ultimate fresh face monochromatic look. The moisturizing buildable formula easily melts into cheeks and lips to create varying intensities of radiant rich color. So these come in two different shades. The first one, which we'll do swatches of these in just a second guys, but the first one is called Do It Flirty. And this one has shades of sort of like bright pink, bright coral, and kind of like I would call this like a purpley rose color. And then the second palette is called Do It Undercover. And this one is for those of us that love a good nude blush. So this has basically a range of shades ranging from this peachy nude shade to this brown, kind of like a mulberry shade all the way to this beautiful purple shade. Really excited to try these out. And in terms of the packaging, you will notice this is pretty much in line with what Danessa Myricks puts out with the rest of her line, which is it's a very sleek, easy to use packaging, but it's also very, very functional for makeup artists. As a makeup artist, if you have this in your kit, you can easily tell the difference between each of these palettes. You can easily reach for it. And it's kind of like no frills packaging, but at the same time, I think it's really nice. It's really clean. Danessa also mentioned in her Teach Me Tuesday video that they specifically designed 
these pan sizes to be longer so that you could easily sort of swipe a brush through them, tap your finger into them, basically making it kind of like a wider pan just so that it was easy not only for the everyday consumer but also the makeup artist to be able to kind of swipe their brush through it. We've all been there where we have a palette and like our brush is way too big and we're trying to like get into the pan or just get that one color without getting, you know, blush from the color next door onto our brush. So she did mention that as well. And I just want to point that out when describing the packaging. Now I'm going to be comparing this with a couple of Danessa's other very popular cream products, but she did say in just describing this in general in her video, she said, these are supposed to be very pigmented. They're really supposed to pack a punch, which is pretty common with a lot of her products. You really only should need a little, little bit. You can definitely build them up. She wanted something that was gonna be very pigmented and buildable, but also easy to blend. So I haven't tried these out. These, this is my first impression. So with that, let's get into the demo and try out these blushes. All right, pretty people, let's do this. <laughs> so I've got the Do It Undercover palette and I've got the Do It Alerty palette. And what I'm actually going to do first is, <laughs> what I'm going to do first, what I'm going to do first is swatch all of these for you guys. So you can get a good sense of the color and how it can be both built up and blended out. And then I'm going to go into a demo. We're going to put some of these on my face and I'm going to be using a brush and I'm also going to be using a sponge so you guys can get kind of a good idea for how these look depending on what sort of application you prefer. So let's start off with the Do It Flirty palette. And I just want to show you to begin kind of the texture that you're getting here. You can see I swatched this one last night. Um, look how creamy this is. It feels very balmy. You can see how it's kind of smoothed in the pan. And then listen to this. It does have kind of like a sticky texture. So I think we're, you know, we're going to find out is this actually sticky on the skin, but I wanted to just kind of show you what is then coming off like on my finger, starting off with Coquette, which is a light peachy shade. This looks super light in the pan, but when you actually see it, it's like, oh, that's like your classic peach. So listen to this. It does feel very sticky on my hand. And this is what it looks like when you shear that color out. I just turned my lights down a little bit for you guys so you can see that. That is Coquette. Next up we have Sweet Cheeks, which is a coral with a little light shimmer. And that is Sweet Cheeks. This color reminds me of those melt, I think they're called like digital dust blushes. I can't remember what they're called, but the ones that are very, very glowy, that's what this reminds me of. I need to try this shade. That, it has a very nice sheen to it. And here's what it looks like when you blend it out. This does feel very moisturizing and creamy. And when I blend it out, it doesn't feel nearly as sticky. So I just wanna mention that because what you feel in the pan and what you feel in the swatch is not necessarily how it feels on the face when you blend it in, so we'll see. Next up we have XOXO, which is a bright pink. That looks so pretty. Guys, I am so excited for Valentine's Day just because, I don't know, I get in like some kind of makeup mood and XOXO is gonna be on repeat in February. That's what it looks like. Gorgeous pink flush. It's gonna be really hard to decide which of these to put on my cheeks. And then lastly, we have Tease, which is a rosy shade, rosy purple, I would say. That is Tease. Let's blend that out. That really packs a bunch. This is gonna look really nice on darker skin tones because I just like that, that kind of plummy, purpley tone that comes from this. And it really, really packs a punch. Even more than the bright pink, I would say, um, XOXO. Now let's dip into the Do It Undercover palette, starting with this light color here, which is called Hush Hush. And this is kind of like a nude, but it's more neutral in tone as opposed to the one in the other palette, which is definitely more of a peach. And here's the difference between those. This is Hush Hush, which we just watched, and this is Coquette from the other Do It Flirty palette. So I just wanted to show you the difference in tones between those in case these are the shades that 
you guys are really vibing on. Next we have Nuditude, which is more of like a true brown. That is Nuditude and let's just spread that out. I feel like these don't blend, at least with swatches, the ones in this palette don't blend out quite as good. I almost feel like this would be kind of like a bronzer for me. I don't know if I would use something this dark and brown toned as a blush, but the next two look very promising. This, this almost could be a cream contour shade for me, I would say. Next we have Wallflower. This looks to be more of like a purpley toned brown. Yeah, this is like your, I'm not really tan, but I wanna look a little tanned and flush, Sophia kind of shade. I really like that, I really wanna try that out. They used this in the demo as almost like a sculpting blush on the model who was maybe like a shade or two darker than me, and it looked amazing. So I can't wait to try that out. And then lastly, we have Top Secret right here, which seems to be kind of like a darker mulberry shade. Ooh, she put this one on the lips in the demo and it created this really juicy berry lip. Yeah, so this is almost like a berry, like a flushed, I just got in from the snow, like skiing in Vail kind of, <laughs> kind of color and it blends out to like this beautiful flush, so that's there. Okay guys, I hope that those swatches were helpful for you. I will just post some close-ups right now of all of the colors in totality, starting with the Do It Flirty palette. This is the one that had more of the corals and pinks and kind of like that bright peachy shade to start. And then we have the Do It Undercover, which came with more of the neutral nude shade, the brown, the more kind of rosy brown shade and then the plummy mulberry shade as well. All right, guys, let's put these on our face, our lips, and I think I'm gonna do a glossy eye as well. All I am wearing today is sort of like foundation, bronzer, and a little bit of contour and brows, and obviously mascara, but I am wearing a kind of more matte, full coverage foundation from Lancome. It's the Ultra Tint, I can't remember the name of it right now, but I will link that down below. I basically thought, you know what, let me put on something that's gonna be a little bit more matte to see if the balms kind of disrupt the more matte foundation and powder powder bronzer that I have on top. So that way we can see like, even if you're not wearing a super dewy foundation, does this disturb the foundation underneath? And Danessa said that these should not disturb your makeup. And she has said that for all of her products, but I have found some of them to be fairly emollient and, and that's not always the case. So I'm gonna try and use the application tips that I saw in her Teach Me Tuesday video and we're gonna see how this goes. I'm also gonna be applying with a brush, a sponge, and then probably my fingers so we can kind of get a good sense of what works best. Starting off with the Do It Undercover palette, I'm gonna go into this color Wallflower. This is what she used to do sort of like a sculpted blush look. And I'm gonna just kind of go along the contour of my face like she did. And I'm using a BK Beauty 101 brush. This is kind of a, like they call this the bunny foot brush and it just does a really good job of kind of fitting there around the contours of your cheek. And this is very similar to what she used in the demo. I can't, I don't know what brush she was using but it looked very similar in shape to this. So you can see right there that went on really well, really easily. It doesn't feel tacky because I only used such a tiny bit. Um, so when you put it on the face, it doesn't look tacky at all. She really does a lot of blending, but I'll be honest with you guys, like I don't have five minutes to blend out my blush. <laughs> Sorry, Danessa. <laughs> but like, I, you guys know what I mean. I don't wanna be blending it for forever. So I don't want it to be too streaky. That is gorgeous. I really like this. I really like it. I have another brush here from e.l.f. This is a really good uh, inexpensive brush. It's called the Airbrush Blender. It's a couple of bucks from the drugstore. And I'm gonna go in with this brown color and see if it works as more of a contour. The thing about having a palette is that 
<laughs> if you're not going to use all these shades, don't get the palette. You know, you want to make sure that all of these work for you. Or if you're a makeup artist, I think it's a great option. And look, that created just a little bit more depth. And I really barely had to blend it at all. So I just want to show that to you guys. Now I'm gonna go into the Do It Flirty palette and I'm gonna go into this color, Coquette. I'm gonna be using this Clinique brush. I've told you guys about this brush before, but it's just this really nice dual fiber synthetic brush from Clinique. I will link it. They sell it at Macy's. And this never fails me because it makes sure that you don't get too harsh of an application. It literally never fails me wrong, but it also does a good job of kind of like poking into the product as well to pick it up. So I'm just adding this on the apples of the cheek so you can see how gorgeous and coral that is. So pretty. And as you can see, it doesn't, at least here in my camera, it doesn't look super patchy and it doesn't feel tacky. It doesn't feel like, you know, here, let's do the hair test. Nothing sticks. No flyaway sticking. So we are good. Good to go. <sighs> I'm kind of torn if I want to go into XOXO or if I want to go into Sweet Cheeks, but I'm thinking maybe we'll just mix them together. So you know what? Let's start off with Sweet Cheeks and then we're going to go into XOXO. All right. So taking my Clinique brush and going into Sweet Cheeks, which is the only, the only shimmery shade, I think, in this whole collection here. Hmm. <sighs> Blush. Nothing gets me into the mood for spring like cream blush. Does anybody feel the same way? Like as soon as the Christmas is over, I want it to be spring. Like I want it to be spring right now. I'm just pretending. Wow, that looks so pretty. Ah. And I'm applying that kind of like to the apples of the cheeks. You can see that I'm building it up. And as we saw when I swatched, it can be very opaque. You can really go into this. She shows it in the demo how deep it can go, but then you can always blend it out. It still feels kind of like moisturizing, but not sticky. There might be like a very slight tack. Okay, let's take the e.l.f. brush and we're gonna go into XOXO, which is the bright pink shade. Let's put this on the high points. Yeah, so you get like a much brighter flush. Woo! See, I got a little bit too much right there, but it's blending out. And I don't see it moving the Lancome. I don't see it moving the foundation. What do you guys think? I'm getting up super close here so you can see what that looks like. And I will even turn down my lights. Let's turn these way down. Okay, the light is off. Mm, mm, it looks good. Look at that shine. Let's put more. Ooh. I know that's a little bit more than maybe I would want, but sometimes I like a nice pink cheek. And you know what? I like a nice bright flush cheek like the colors in this palette with a really plain eye like this, maybe just mascara or a little bit of one of these on the lid. So that's what we're gonna do next. When I do bold cheeks, sometimes I like to make it just about the cheeks. So on this side, we have more of like the sculpted blush look with a little bit of like neutral on top. And then on this side, we did the coral and the pink and just created like a little bit more of an ombre. And I could have made it more prominent if I wanted to, but I think that this has a beautiful, very seamless application. So far, I love these. I had to go run and get some brushes because I forgot we were putting these on the eyes. So I'm gonna be going in with this color, Hush Hush, and I'm using this little shader synthetic brush from Spectrum and Katie Jane Hughes. All right, so I have my brush kind of like loaded up with the pigment, and I know I would normally not put mascara on before this, but... Okay, so this is how it looks like on the eye. It's just kind of beautiful and glossy, and... I don't think I would do much more than that. I think this is supposed to be a very easy, like if you're doing something more editorial, sure. But if you're just trying to wear this as eyeshadow, you can definitely pull it off. But I wouldn't go and like layer powder products on top of that. I don't think that 
would be a good idea. I think it would easily get muddy because it's going to crease. Now, I do think you can easily layer highlighter on top of this. They're already dewy, so maybe you don't need highlighter. But in terms of the eyes, I think you could do a really simple eye here to create like it says in the description, a monochromatic look. But I, I don't know if I would go much farther than this, but that that's just my personal, that's just my personal recommendation. So on this eye, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna use the color Tease right here, which is that rose color. Really picks up a lot of pigment. That's why I recommend using synthetic brushes for these products. You will never get this out of your like fancy food aid brushes. I just, I don't think I would use that. This would be a lot easier to blend if I hadn't put mascara on, but alas, I did have things to do earlier today. <laughs> I'm just taking this clean little ColourPop brush and I am blending the edges out. If you ever have like too much on your brush, just take a clean brush and blend it away. So I know we put a lot of blush on, but there is that side which is nude, and there is this side, which is more of the springy look. I'm actually really digging this pink color, and I think I take it back, this does not look as rose when you put it on the face. It it looks more pink. It looks more like a true springy pink. So comment down below, tell me like which side you guys prefer. Do you like the poppy, more like do it flirty side, or do you like the more neutral sculpted do it undercover side? You guys let me know what you like best on me or what you personally prefer, I would love to hear. Okay, lastly, let's put these on the lips and see how they feel. I'm gonna start off with this color, Top Secret, because this is what she used in the demo to create a really beautiful kind of berry lip. And I'm just using this simple little ColourPop brush number E4. It really just feels like a thick balm, but not in a sticky way, kind of in the way that it's very moisturizing, but it's not gonna move around, like it's not gonna slip around. I thought it would feel way more emollient and slippy based off of the shine and the juiciness that it gave in her demo, but I'm definitely not getting that from this. Because this isn't so slippy, you can really control the color very well. It's not gonna move all over the place when you're you know, doing a photo shoot or even for those of us who are not makeup artists when we're just like eating, going throughout our day. Mm. What do you guys think of that? I think that feels really good. It's like a little tacky, but not in a way that it would distract me. In fact, I like this way better. I don't like super slippy formulas. I feel like that created enough pigmentation, but it's not gonna be as dark as it is in the pan, right? It's gonna it's gonna be somewhat sheer. What do you guys think? Do you like the look of that on the lips? Obviously we wouldn't do it with like this much blush and <laughs> different colored eyes, but I think that the tone of it is gorgeous. I know this demo is getting a little bit long, but I do wanna just show you real quick what it looks like with a sponge application. So I have my little Patrick Star sponge here. <laughs> this was from like a SpongeBob collection that I think Wet n Wild did. And I'm gonna go back into the coquette shade and we're just gonna tap his little booty into this, into the blush. And we're gonna see how it applies and how it intensifies. And as expected, that performs perfectly well. So I think guys, if you, whether you like to use a sponge or whether you like to use a brush, I think that you will be fine. Personally, I like a brush. That's how, what Danessa uses. So that's what I would recommend. But as you can see, you can get some really great pigmentation here. Lastly, I wanna do a quick little application with the fingers. I'm gonna go into this color, Sweet Cheeks. I'm gonna put a little bit on my fingers here and we're gonna tap it, tap, tap, tap. This is what Danessa does, she goes tap, tap, tap. She really works the tapping. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, based off of the swatches that I did for you and what I'm doing right now, I don't think that I would recommend using your fingers for this. I think I would recommend using a sponge or the brushes because as you can see, it's getting a little bit streaky and you could kind of see as I was blending it on my hand during the swatches, it's like, it, it's not that it doesn't blend well, it's just when you're only using like this surface area, it takes a little more elbow grease. Whereas I think when you have all of the bristles of the brush, it really diffuses 
the color. So I just want to share these application tips. This kind of goes for any cream blush. That's what I prefer. Now with the Dew Wet Balm, which I'll show you in a second, I do think that that works really well with your fingers because you're putting it on a smaller area. So with that, that completes our demo and we're going to get into some comparisons. Okay guys, let's kick off some comparisons. So the first comparison I'm gonna do is with the Balm Contour. I actually am testing these for another video for you guys, so stay tuned for that. But I just wanna kind of compare the formula of this versus the Do It Undercover palette so you guys can kind of get a sense of the difference in case you like this formula or you don't like this formula. I think this is one of the most popular products that Danessa sells in terms of like the mainstream consumer market, so that's one of the reasons why I wanna compare it. So here I have the Balm Contour in the shade Light 2. This is the shade that I was actually wearing today. I had a little bit there. And then I'm going to swatch the shade Nuditude right here to just kind of show you not only the difference in tone, but how it blends out. And the main difference between this formula, which Danessa said in her video and I can attest to, is that the Balm Contour is a much silkier, more emollient, and more blendable formula. It is made to melt into the skin, Danessa says. And so you can see how much more easily with my fingers I can blend this. It feels um, silkier. It feels greasier. I know we don't like to use that word, but it feels greasier. Whereas the Nuditude shade feels tacky and sticky on the hand. And as you see, when we put it on, it just, it packs more of a punch. Like these are supposed to be blushes. They're supposed to be punchier and more pigmented. Whereas the contour is something that's supposed to kind of very easily blend into the skin. So it is a different formula and that's kind of the difference between the two. Next up, we have the Dew Wet Balm, another very popular product from Danessa. And I have the shade Morning Dew. It has like a slight shimmer. And so you can probably tell, or maybe you can't with the lights here, but this formula is even greasier. I will say, I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence about this product because on the one hand, I love the dewy shine it gives me, but I don't really agree with what Danessa says about the claims of this. It does kind of mess with your foundation, so you do have to be very careful. And I can demo it for you now. This, you just kind of tap, 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 and see that shimmer and shine it gives me. Now, I would blend it in a little bit more, but this formula way greasier like this is the lightest most emollient greasiest formula like look how easy my finger is slipping through this is slippy that's a good word for this this is a slippy form formula so it's very different so if you don't like these or you're not a huge fan of these i'm kind of on the fence about it don't be deterred by these new palettes and lastly danessa also sells these luxe cream palettes I was just totally drawn to this color story. I don't even really use this as much unless I'm really looking for a particular shade. I think that these are better geared towards makeup artists. So right off the bat, if you're deciding between these or I don't know, if you have this, you probably don't need these new palettes. But I'm just saying if you're not a makeup artist, I would go for the new palettes. I would say these are the closest to what we have in the new palettes. <laughs> had to clean off my hand there for a second. Had too much do wet balm. So as you can see, extremely pigmented. I'm gonna swatch a similar shade from the Do It Flirty. Here is XOXO from the Do It Flirty. And these are very, very similar. They're extremely similar in formula. I don't know if I wanna go as far to say they are the same formula and maybe Danessa relaunched this formula to make it a little bit more accessible for other folks who don't need a million colors in one palette. If anything, Maybe this one from the bigger palette, the Lux Cream palette, is a little creamier, whereas this one's a little more like tackier, but I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. The thing about this is that it's straight up for a makeup artist. Like you're going to take your little spatula, you're going to scoop out a tiny little bit, you're going to put it on a palette and use it. As you can see, my big old brush is not fitting into one of these, which we talked about in the beginning in terms of the packaging, but it easily fits in this. So for me, 
this is much more easy and user friendly to use. That being said, I still like to kind of dip into this. As you can see, I go for more of like the extreme colors. So I just wanted to point that out. I think this is very similar. Like if you're a makeup artist and you're happy with this, I don't necessarily think that you need this. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed those comparisons and they were helpful in helping you make your purchase decision. Now, let me summarize everything in my final thoughts. All right, friends, hopefully that was helpful. It is now time for my final thoughts. What do I think of these cheek and lip palettes? If you couldn't already tell from the demo, I really like these palettes. I think this is a really great formula that's accessible to both a makeup artist and the everyday makeup consumer. I think that also the packaging, while it is not the most luxurious, I think this is a little bit more approachable for kind of like everyday makeup wearers like myself. If you are a makeup artist though, I can definitely see how the large pan size, being able to kind of swipe your brush through is also gonna be really helpful. I like also that I can see through. I think sometimes in my collection, I have a little bit of trouble finding the type of makeup or finding a specific palette. So personally, I don't really mind this packaging. For $32, you are getting four multi-use blushes or pigments, I should say, that you can use all over the face, on the eyes, and on the lips. So in general, I really like this formula. Now let's talk about the formula on each part of the face, starting with the cheeks. In summary, you know, we tested this out. It's not super tacky and I'm feeling on my face right now and like, I can feel it. Like I can feel that it's a tad tacky because it is a cream, but it's not super sticky. Like if it was windy, I don't think hair would stick to my face. It doesn't feel like flypaper and you guys comment down below if you try these out. Do you agree? Because I personally have dry skin and so for me, I welcome a little bit of glow. I welcome kind of like that juicy look. I like a juicy cheek beaming from afar. That's just me though. <laughs> but I also like that it's very pigmented. It applied really well with the brush, really well with the damp sponge. You can apply with your fingers, although that wouldn't be my preferred method. I think that you kind of, I think you just have to spend a longer time trying to blend it out. But all in all, I really like the formula. I like how blendable it is and how pigmented it is. So I think that these are going to work for a lot of different skin tones, which is another thing that Danessa Myricks is really good at, making something that is not only multifunctional, but works for a lot of different people and a lot of different skin tones. Now let's talk about how it works on the eyes. I think that this, you know, I'm feeling it now and it's not as glossy as it was when I first applied. I really think that this is going to stick and wear well. Although because this is such a tacky formula, I don't think I would like use more than one shade to create different eye looks. I think this is more of like a one and done. I'm just gonna like, you know, put a little bit on my cheeks, like tap a little bit on my eye and I'm gonna get this gorgeous monochromatic look, which is what it says on the tin it says that's what it says in the description so i really liked it on my eyes personally i don't put too too many cream products on my eyes though so i really do think i'm going to be wearing this more as a blush but that being said sometimes when i reach for blushes i then go in and put them on my eyes so i like that this is kind of a blush first sort of product at least that's how i think a lot of people are going to be using these and lastly on the lips I think it works really well. It feels like it's just sticking to my lips and it's not, it's so comfortable and moisturizing right now. I don't feel like it's gonna move. I did go in with a little bit of lip liner right before I film these final thoughts. I'm using the Wayne Goss Lip Liner in Natural Berry, which I think pairs really well with this, what shade is this? Tease, the Tease shade in here, which was kind of more like the rosy berry shade, which what, what shade are we using? It is the Top Secret, which was the darkest shade in this palette and came out as kind of like this beautiful berry. I don't think this is as glossy as it looked when Danessa, when she did the demo, but it sets down and maybe hopefully that is helpful for you guys. I think the main thing here is that I'm not gonna like carry this around in my purse and apply it to my lips. So for me, if I'm gonna put this on my lips, it's gonna be more of like a work from home kind of situation where I'm getting ready in the morning and then I do my cheeks, maybe I put it on my eyes and then I like, you know what? Let me put a little bit on my lips. Let me put a little bit on my lips while I'm here, but I'm not gonna be taking this with me in my bag. So in that regard, I think, 
the lip application it's a little bit better if you're more going for that makeup artist like i'm just doing one application and then i'm touching up my client not so much like average consumer i'm going to be putting this on my lips and reapplying throughout the day and the last thing that i wanted to mention is that i don't think that this disturbed my foundation underneath i did go and take a close look in my bathroom and in daylight to see if this was breaking down my foundation and i really didn't see anything you know anything substantial or anything to worry about. I was wearing, or I am wearing a powder bronzer and I'm wearing a full coverage matte foundation and everything looks beautiful. What's up? Editing Sophia here and my little assistant. I just wanted to pop in real quick to show you guys what this looks like at the end of the day. It is now 8.24 p.m. So I've been wearing this for a number of hours most of the day and hopefully you guys can see this but the blush is still there. The eye shadow or the same product that's on my eyes is still there. It kind of has dried down a little bit on the eyes and it did crease just a tiny bit but not as much as other sort of cream and gloss products. So I think if you're looking for something easy on the eyes, it works well. Um, kind of reminds me of those like little Surratt singles, the dewy eye gloss singles, except I feel like those crease way, way worse. It's still on my face and you can see that I still have kind of not only the color, but a little bit of the glow and it hasn't broken down. It honestly looks really good. I'm really, really impressed considering these are considered a dewy formula. And I feel like a lot of times those kinds of formulas, they just sort of disappear throughout the day. So I really enjoyed the longevity of these as well. So I just wanna let you know that because a lot of times you watch these reviews and then nobody really tests to see what happened after the review. So just popping in to let you know that. Good night. Anyway, guys, I hope that this in-depth review is helpful for you all. I know my reviews are a little bit long, but I really like to give you guys every single detail that you need to know about this product. And you guys are always welcome to skip around in the timestamps. If you have made it this far, maybe that means you enjoyed the video or you enjoyed Danessa Myrick's products. And if you made it this far, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you as a part of my community. I have a lot of really awesome luxury beauty reviews coming up soon, including more Danessa Myrick. So if that is of interest to you, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to hear about every time I upload a new video. Lastly, whoo, this has been a lot today, but give your girl a thumbs up, okay? Or better yet, leave me a comment. I'm a pretty small YouTuber. I'm just getting started and leaving a comment really supports my channel, but it also makes my day because I read every single comment. I love hearing from you guys. Every time I get a comment, I'm so excited to see what you guys think of the video, whether you're into the product or you're not into the product. And I would love for you guys to comment and let me know, are you guys gonna be picking these up? Are you interested in picking them up? And whether or not, tell me, which one would you buy? Would you buy the Do It Flirty, like the Pinky Poppy shades, or would you buy the Do It Undercover? I was kind of expecting to either love or hate one of these, and I actually love them both. Like, I can't believe it, but I actually love both of them. So you guys tell me which one you prefer in the comment section down below. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you are having a wonderful day and a wonderful week, and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.